पकड़े ये व्यापारी कारों के हाँ 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 नमस्कार गुजरात लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल एडिशन फोर दूसरा दिन और दूसरे दिन की ये दूसरी सभा सुबह से लेके अभी तक आपने बहुत सारे इंटरेस्टिंग सेशंस अटेंड किए होंगे मैं आशा करता हूँ उम्मीद करता हूँ आप लोगों को बड़ा मजा आया होगा ऑल ऑफ इस दिन मेरा हिंदी में बोलने का कारण ये है कि एक बहुत ही रसप्रद संवाद यहाँ पे होने जा रहा है कुछ ऐसी बातें आज हम जानने समझने वाले हैं मेरे ख्याल से समझना भी उसमें बाद में रहेगा ये जानने में ही इतने ज़्यादा मज़ा आने वाला है आपको कि आपको लगेगा कि या वर्थ अटेंडिंग दिस सेशन काल्पनिक जेम्स बॉन्ड नहीं असली भारतीय जासूस स्पाई स्टोरीज हमने अच्छी खासी देखी हैं हॉलीवुड मूवीज में शायद पढ़ी हो फिल्में देखी हो इन सब में कभी भी हमको बहुत ही कम ऐसे कैरेक्टर्स या तो ऐसे पात्र हमको देखने को मिले हैं जो कि बाकायदा भारतीय रहे हैं हमारे पास बहुत ही शायद कम माहिती है मैं नहीं कहूँगा कि हमारे पास स्टोरीज कम है मैं ये कहूँगा कि हमारे पास उपलब्ध उपलब्ध जानकारियाँ बहुत कम है कि हमारे देश से किसी ने ऐसा कोई कारनामा किया स्पाई स्पाई स्टोरीज अपने आप में एक बहुत बड़ा आ, अनुभव है ऐसा ही एक अनुभव आज आपके साथ शेयर करने का मन है हमारे भारत के बहुत ही रिस्पेक्टेड कैन वी कॉल दैम डबल एजेंट मुझे नहीं पता है ए सी एन नाम प्यार ये बहुत ही आदरणीय नाम रहा है हमारा आ, हमारी आ, इंडियन सिस्टम में हमारे गवर्नमेंट में हमारे आ, हमारी जासूसी डिपार्टमेंट में हमारी स्टोरीज में ए सी एन नाम प्यार इस नाम को आज ज़्यादा थोड़ा एक्सप्लोर करने का इरादा है और उसके लिए मैं बहुत ही शुक्रगुजार हूँ कि मेरे साथ ऐसे दो व्यक्तित्व हैं जो इस बात पे बोलने के लिए सबसे ज़्यादा उचित है बड़े ही आदरपूर्वक बहुत बड़े ही सम्मान के साथ मैं आमंत्रण देना चाहूँगा सुश्री नीलम नरुला का नीलम जी रोली बुक्स के साथ काम कर रही हैं मैनेजिंग एडिटर है और बहुत ही आदर के साथ मैं नीलम जी से रिक्वेस्ट करूँगा गुजारिश करूँगा कि आप आएँ मैं उनको भी बुलाता हूँ मैम आप आइए नीलम जी रोली बुक्स के साथ बहुत ही आ, आ, काम कर रही है वहाँ मैनेजिंग एडिटर है और उतने ही सम्मान के साथ मैं बहुत ही आदर के साथ बुलाना चाहूँगा बपल्ला बालाचंद्रन जी को वो फॉर्मर स्पेशल सेक्रेटरी कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया में रहे हैं दोस्तों बहुत ही ज़्यादा जोरदार तालियों के साथ इन दोनों महानुभावों का हम स्वागत करेंगे प्लीज सर प्लीज हर सीट मैम प्लीज सर हर सीट सर बालाचंद्रन जी का सीधा वास्ता रहा है ए सी एन नाम्बियार के साथ और एक किताब है जिनके बारे में शायद नीलम जी ज़्यादा बताएंगी और नाम्बियार जी के बारे में किससे कहानियाँ उनका जीवन पॉलिटिकल करियर या पॉलिटिक्स के साथ उनका वास्ता ये सब समझने की हम आज कोशिश करने वाले हैं दिस इज़ गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन आई एम श्योर थोड़ी सी कन्वर्सेशन भी लेंगे इनिशियल uh, हमारी uh, uh, बातचीत के बाद हम ऑडियंस से भी चाहेंगे कि वो इंटरेक्ट करें इस बड़े uh, uh, रसप्रद हस्ती के बारे में जानने के बाद सो वट यू मैम नीलम जी आप शुरू करें और इस संवाद को आगे बढ़ाएं
I think before we start talking about this in Namibia, we need a brief introduction from the author Vapala Balachandran who has written a book on Asian Nambia because there are so many theories about him whether he was a spy or he was just a person who was close to Nehru, Indira Gandhi and Chandra. So Mr. Balachandran can you please introduce Asian Nambia to us? Uh, <coughs> please excuse me for uh, speaking in English. Okay, sir. Uh, see, briefly, in 2014, okay. there were some uh, declassified okay. British intelligence records were released in, in England. So the little closer to you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. So that at that time. It was splashed all over. A Soviet spy was uh, the, his records. That is actually, you know, the, uh, in the Western countries, some of the so-called uh, intelligence records are declassified. Declassified means from secret it becomes, uh, you know, open. So there were a number of records pertaining to Second World War were released by the British government. And uh, one set of documents pertain to Mr. A. C. N. Nambia, who was our ambassador last in during Mr. Nehru's time for West Germany. At that time, Germany was divided. So that created a lot of sensation all over Times of India. Uh, Times of India, 25th October, said Netaji deputy Nehru's old friend was a Soviet spy, British documents revealed. That is how the whole thing started. Now, I came to know him from 19, <coughs> 1980. In fact, to be precise, on 24th of uh, April 1980, till his death in Delhi in 1986, January. At that time, he was living in Zurich. He was living all alone. I was posted in a in our mission in Western Europe. I was asked, Mrs. Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister at that time. I did not know anything about his background. So I was, it was more of a protocol visit of an old freedom fighter who was a who was a right hand man of Subhash Chandra Bose for his operations in in uh, Europe before he shifted to Far East to start the INA and all that. And also of Jawaharlal Nehru and also of Mrs. Nehru. So my object was only to look after how is his health and all that. Then I, as desired by the Prime Minister, I brought him back to India twice. He was quite old at that time. When I met him, he was about 88 or 87. He died when he was 90. And uh, so I brought him in 1982, then uh, 1984. Okay. So this is the background of this gentleman. He was not a spy. So I think Neelam would like to ask certain questions and then I will answer. Uh, in the book you quote that, uh, I'm quoting from the book you say that Nambia was known to many but not much about him was really known. Bits and pieces of facts and anecdotes, oftentimes conflicting, may be had from the sparse sources. If anything, the mystery surrounding Nambiar only ever increased. He seemed content in the shadows cast by the many powerful people he came in contact with, not to mention the opaque shadows of time itself. Do you think this was deliberate? Why? Yeah. You see, the. Let me. Uh, go back into his history. <coughs> As I mentioned, when I met him, I did not uh, know anything about him. And uh, it is after his death, and that too, after 2001, I started researching into his past. Because there is something very, very totally unknown to him. 
he was his, his real what who was the real nabya is not known at all maybe because we did not know we did not care to know how much he had contributed for our independence struggle in europe so most of what is written in the book is not because of my contact with him personally between 1980 and 1986 six years but after there was a book review of uh, of a german book german man called Her rudolf harto he was the interpreter for the indian legion now in my time i did not know that subhash chandra bose had raised an indian army before ina we all knew about ina but we did not know about indian legion so this that that is how my attention was attracted that this man was an interpreter to the indian army they were actually pow prisoners of war hitler had taken these indian prisoners of war there were about 20000 uh, i'm talking about second world war i mean sorry first world war and uh, then they converted into uh, the uh, as the indian legion subhash chandra bose wanted to bring them to india and become the nucleus of a new indian army and that book had clearly mentioned that mr nambiar was in charge of the whole thing i did not know during six years when i knew so that is why i had mentioned that most of my investigation it uh, spanned reading about 41 books it uh, necessitated getting old british intelligence records about nambiar subhash chandra bose virendranath chatwadi i don't know how many of you had heard about virendranath chatwadi he went to england in 1909 and he was one of the biggest revolutionaries sarvesh naidu jenas jenga brother he was known as a terrorist and he was involved in so many cases so he was a brother in law so all these things i had to investigate through reading books uh, then bombay special branch records all these things so this book is a compilation of whatever i have investigated not knowing uh, rather he did not tell me all this so that is why Uh, the from the shadows you know the title of the book itself is from the shadows we managed to pull him out of the shadows and present what his role was yeah. on the one hand the british thought that he was a communist spy <laughs> and his role as a freedom fighter has not been revealed at all and uh, let me tell very more claim very modestly this is the first book Uh, describing nabya's contribution to our independence struggle clearly the six years you were in touch with him you because he never told you about these things you probably never discussed these things so how was knowing him as a person there because you were not talking about communism or you were not talking about his relationship with the world leaders but how was his how was your relationship with him during those years my relationship was almost like personal he had no family he had uh, wives but separated his first wife who was also sarvesh nadu's uh, sister uh, called suhasini dambya i did not know anything about them at that time again he was he would not tell anything about his personal uh, relationship with anybody not even with his wife except that she broke away from him she she had also gone to you know to england as a she went as a student he went as a uh, to uh, he also went there in 1922 as a student then he became a journalist because when he was a student in madras he had worked with hindu he was an apprentice in hindu so he started writing for hindu then they uh, they found that you know england was not that good so they shifted to berlin why because sarojini naidu's son Uh, jay surya naidu was also there and uh, uh, this virendranath uh, uh, chatwadi was also in berlin if you see the history between the first and second world war berlin had more importance as a academic center than even london you will find number of indians had uh, gone there and that was much better the 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 foreign scholars used to come very often so they also went there and uh, so mr nambiar 
coming back to your point, he would not mention anything about his personal life, only his relationship with Nehru, his relationship with, little bit with Bose, and more with Indira Gandhi because she was the Prime Minister. That's all the thing. And my relationship was personal. He almost treated me like a member of his family. And uh, between, let me tell you that between uh, uh, 1983 and 84, 84 when I brought it, he wrote to me about 27, 28 letters. Every, almost every month he used to write a letter. And you know, like that, that it was a personal thing. And I did not know anything about it. We know from the book that he came back to India in 1983-84. Was it uh, was it his own idea to come back to India? He wanted to come himself, or was there any other uh, was there any other motive, or was there any other person who wanted him to come back to India? See, Mrs. Gandhi, uh, you know, let me just go back into the history a little bit. Nehru, uh, I will deal with uh, his relationship with Bose later. In fact, most of his uh, brand, Chapa, that he was a spy of the British, uh, of the uh, of the Soviet Union, was during his service with Subhash Chandra Bose. See, Kamala Nehru was very sick. Nehru was in jail. He did not have a trusted person to look after Kamala Nehru, the ailing Kamala Nehru, and teenage uh, Indra going to Europe. So he wrote to Nambia. Meanwhile, what had happened to Nambia was that Hitler had arrested him. Hitler had arrested him and uh, lodged him in jail and expelled him because he was treated like a communist. You must have heard about the Reichstag fire. Reichstag fire was a parliament fire. That is actually, it was done by the Nazis themselves. But they blamed the communists for that. And uh, Nambiar, Jay Suri Naidu and others were all arrested, being communists. So he had, he ran away. Actually he was expelled and he was in Prague. So Nehru wrote to him in Prague, my wife is coming, she is very sick, so please look after her. So Nambiar looked after Kamala Nehru till her death and also became a local guardian for Indira Gandhi's education. So that is the type of uh, personal relationship. So Mrs. Gandhi, when she came back to power, you know, I did not know uh, about these things even before 1980 or even after that. 1980, she felt that Nambiar was very ill and uh, she wanted him to come to London for the Festival of India. And uh, she sent word actually through, you must have heard about Mr. Aaron Kao, who was the founder of RAW. I was in RAW at that time. Mr. Kao suggested my name that I should accompany Nambiar to London. Nambiar said, I can't go, my health is not good. So these are the signs Mrs. Gandhi thought that he's getting old, he's all alone, I want him to come to India. So it is under her pressure that he first came in 1982. I brought him to India, but he didn't like, you know, he had left uh, India in 1922. And here we are talking about 1982. All that thing except for a very brief period and for a long time he was in prison, you know, both by Hitler as well as by the Allied troops. Because he helped both, they treated him as a Nazi collaborator and put him for about two, three years in prison. And so he had lost touch with India. He didn't like India. So he went back after three, four months. Then uh, uh, the second time, it was on his own request. That is why he wrote about 27 letters to me. Second thing was, uh, my health is getting bad, I want to come back to India, there is nobody to look after me. So please uh, come and uh, take me. So second was on his request. But tragically, four days after he came here, Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated. And that completely broke itself. I think to understand Nambiar better, uh, should we talk about his relationship with Bose and how yeah. Bose is important in his life? See, how is that? Now, the, the riddle, I have mentioned this in my book. We all think, or rather believe, that Nehru and Bose were political rivals. No doubt, if you interpret the history of Congress party, they were rivals. And, in fact, 
Mr. Moses, quarrel was more with Gandhiji and less with Nehru. His complaint, in fact, after he resigned from Haripuri Congress session, he wrote a letter, a very nasty letter to Nehru, saying that at least you could have supported me. You know, they were friends. It is not that they, they were political rivals. They were friends. In fact, when Kamala Nehru came to Vienna uh, by steamer for medical treatment, Bose was there to receive her. Bose was in Vienna and Nambiar was in Prague. And Nambiar came only next day. And even when she was grievously ill in Lausanne, she died in Lausanne. And even in Baden Baden, when she was undergoing treatment, Bose had gone to see them. So they were personal friends, but politically, Bose felt that uh, Nehru was too much under the influence of Gandhiji, so you will let me know. Now, the riddle is, how is that uh, Nambiar came to know Nehru from 1926? He came to know Bose intimately only in 1934. Earlier, he was a journalist in Berlin, and everybody knew that he is an influential person. And incidentally, the Congress and party at that time asked him to have a representative office of India there. And he was manning that. And more interestingly, that was to allow the students in uh, Berlin to get admission to Berlin University. Because, you know, German language and other things, the problems are there. So, since Nambiar spoke uh, German very well, he was manning that office. That was funded by Congress party, by Nehru. And the first, first uh, application that he dealt with was Ram Manohar Lohia. Ram Manohar Lohia turned out to be one of the bitterest critics of Nehru and uh, Indira Gandhi. These are all, you know, when you, in retrospect, it, all these things look very, very interesting. So Bose had heard about, Bose had heard about uh, uh, Nambia. And Bose wanted him at that time also. At that time, he didn't have an idea of running away from India and carrying, you know, setting up a, you know, a parallel government and all that. So in 1934, when he came, finally, he, uh, you know, he asked Nambiar, went on asking Nambiar. At that time, he was uh, on, uh, you know, uh, he was on exile in Prague. And Nambiar went on saying that, uh, respectfully, he said, your idea of getting the help of Mussolini and Hitler is not going to work. So they left it at that, and then Bose came back, and then he became the Congress president and all that. Incidentally, at that time, Bose had used Nambiar to many of these, uh, you know, I had so much of voluminous record. Many of these things I have not even reflected in the book, otherwise the book would have gone to 1,500 pages. Now, there is a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, evidence that Bose asked, you see, this is the time when he didn't want to run away from India, escape from India. Before that, he was thinking that the Congress Party's uh, thing is not going to get us any uh, independent moment. I mean, independence at all. So he has been thinking about it. He asked one fellow, his name is, he was a close associate of uh, Mussolini, but a very shadowy figure. His name is Rappi Cavoli. He asked Nambiar, you uh, sent word uh, to him, I want to meet uh, Mussolini. And you see, this was when he was going to London. And Nambiar, at that time, who was in Prague, he contacted repeatedly, fixed up the appointment with Mussolini, who came, came back to India met, and was elected as the Congress president. Of the other, uh, uh, yes, there was another, uh, no, not Haripur. Haripur is a place at the time when he had to resign. So all this type of thing was, uh, Nambiar was doing all this. And, uh, but these these things are, I have not mentioned because, you know, they have become very voluminous. There is more of a personal thing involved in this and more of his uh, relationship with Nehru, more of his relationship with, uh, with uh, uh, Indira Gandhi. Now, coming back to Bose, Bose had implicit, despite knowing that he was a, Nehru man. He used to tell him, taunt him, you are Nehru man, no? that's why you are disagreeing with me. Although he was his number two, Nambiar used to say politely, look, your thing is not going to work. Hitler is not going to help us. So he used to say that. But the extent of Suvar Chandra Bose's confidence in him was, now, I will only say, I already mentioned to you about Rappi Kavali, and he Search for Nambiar. You see, what happened is that Hitler's army came to Prague. 
occupied France. So Nambiar ran away from there. He went to France. Hitler's army came there also and captured uh, the whole, uh, practically the whole of half of France. So he was hiding in a small village on Spanish border. By that time, uh, Bo had escaped from India, had go gone to Berlin. There he wanted to set up an office. He didn't have a proper uh, person who will manage that office. So he started through the German espionage service. Uh, where is this man gone? Where has he disappeared? So he, when finally Nambiara flushed out of that small village and taken to Paris to meet Bose, Bose told him, I had to search from, uh, from, uh, you know, from Turkey to Morocco for you. Where were you hiding? So, because he was hiding from the Germans, he was hiding. Then he said, you come down. You have to come to help me. 19, this was 1942. Nambiar avoided that twice because he had a bad, he was beaten up incidentally. When he was arrested by Hitler's people, those stormtroopers beat him up with leather belts and put him in uh, jail and uh, this and that. Well. He had bad uh, memories about that. He didn't want to go. Then again, uh, both uh, sent uh, another Indian. Third time, he sent a German count to take him out of that thing and come to me now, help me. So the first thing he told him was, my stay, you see, by that time, Bose was quite disillusioned with Hitler. Hitler did not want to help India at all. As Nambiara said, it is uh, Bose realized that my uh, my stay in uh, Berlin was not were going to be very fruitful. In any case, Mussolini was busy with his own you know fight in uh, Africa and all that. So he told Nambiara, "Look, I wanted you to come here to take charge of my office, even though I am going to Far East." But he did not tell anybody else, only to Nambiar, that my stay is going to be temporary. And second was, when he finally, now I have described how he escaped. The British had put a dragnet all over to catch him. And he escaped the dragnet. It is only to Nambiar he told that I am going, I am going by this way. Nambiar didn't tell anybody. So, Nambiar, in other words, were a very trusted person. He you know the, the the about his marriage also it was a secret and they are kept that secret ultimately even Nehru did not know that Bose had married and Bose wrote to Nambiar he was not in government service or diplomatic service at that time 1941 I got the I put that uh, uh, you know that letter also here so he was a very trusted man and that trust means he will speak less he will not blabber like, unlike, uh, I don't want to say about press people, please excuse me. I don't want to, they, you see, he will not reveal anything that has been told him. So that earned him a, a thing of shadowy figure. Why is he so secretive? Now, you should also remember my experience, I can tell you. I was in Europe, uh, posted for four years. There, they have a, because of frequent wars, First World War, Second World War, in between so many other wars. There, an average person staying in Europe is much more secretive than us. We are habit of talking, talking, talking. There, they don't. So that is why the shadowy part came. So many narratives crisscrossing. How many years did it take to research all the material, look for these hidden facts about Nambia, his association? You see, uh, after Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated, he went into a depression, terrible depression. And he had no, uh, he was not uh, close to any family member. He will only want me. He liked my wife also. And we used to go. And uh, thank you. As I told you, uh, Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated within four days of uh, his arrival, uh, final arrival. When he found that she was killed, the whole world collapsed for him. And uh, he was somehow, you know, with the help of Indians and all that there, local Indians, he was managing a quiet life in Surrey. Now you come to a strange place, you feel that you can depend upon 
the prime minister she is gone and like all uh, i am sorry to say this when mr gandhi was alive his house was full of visitors because you know so and so you know on first name basis with the prime minister he can just pick up a phone and call her and i have at least about uh, how many almost about 10 letters indira gandhi she writes as hindu in many uh, cases you know the uh, the pa types indira gandhi she strikes out and said you are affectionately hindu <laughs> my dear nano you are affectionately hindu that was the thing so at that time many people used to come and after her death after 15 days nobody started going except me and mr kao and there was another friend called tk manan that's all so see the uh, so at that time in order to divert his attention what i did was i asked him sir you have gone through the first world war you have seen the communist revolution in fact the, in the that locality where he was staying uh, in old zurich it's a beautiful area old uh, building uh, the german philosopher goethe was staying in the same building where so the bureau stayed and two blocks away was lenin Lenin was hiding from the Tsarist uh, police in uh, Zurich, two blocks away. Uh, uh, he was staying there. That is a, such a famous, I would say, that that uh, area. So I I said, you have seen all these. Why don't you write a book? He said, and he was a writer. In fact, incidentally, I went to Hindu. Mr. N. Ram was very kind enough to give me about 26 dispatches that Nambiar had written between. 1923 or 24 to 1933 when he was arrested those dispatches i tell you uh, are really worth the modern journalist should understand every subject it was like letter from berlin whatever is happening whether it is political economic uh, music dance all those things he writes so beautiful so here is a man he says look i have no energy to uh, write I'm too old. He was already 88, 89 at that time. So I gave him a, a small tape recorder. So he said, whenever you get time, you dictate. You go on dictating, and then my staff will uh, type out, you know, para, uh, what you call transcribe it. And then you have to correct it also. But that gave me no uh, indication. There, it's all his advice to the generation. You should do this. You should do that. it is not he didn't mention anything about uh, practically nothing to about his relationship with uh, bose how he managed to do all these things or with nehru or with uh, mr gandhi so that is why you asked me this question his i uh, uh, i write it as oral transcripts it's about 100 pages yeah. but that is nothing then i had to get from i had to purchase they don't give it free like that You know, not like in India where you get uh, intelligence files, you know, you can copy it free. No, you have to pay for it. I had to pay for five hundred dollars to get this Indian political intelligence file, 1912 to 1950, from a bookshop, a famous bookshop in Holland, Leiden. Then four sets of secret files from Special Branch Bombay. I was in charge of the uh, Special Branch in 1973. Then four sets of declassified in 2014. That gave him that Soviet spy thing, you know. Then his dispatches to Hindu from 8 May 1926 to 9 May 1934. 41 books. Most of it were reconstructed. The relationship between him and with Mrs. Gandhi, Nehru, everything from books and little bit from books. Then he wrote to me 21 letters. Indira Gandhi last 18 letters from 1980 to 1984, 25 letters in Nehru. These are all the basis of uh, my book. It took a long time. It took a long time for me. As I said, you know, I started uh, thinking about uh, uh, writing a book from 2001, but I got to write only from 2005. And the first draft I gave it to Rolly was 2013, which again has transformed. You know, they are. Quite strict. Uh, I used to get angry once in a way. Why are you, uh, why are you delaying? But the effect is now this. And mind you, I still have got a lot of material. 
which I collected, which, which I could not do it. I had to do a lot of weeding out and everything, which I will be giving to Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. Why do you think knowing him or making writing this book was important to you? Do you think it's important for us or for the readers to know who ACN was? Yeah. It is very important because you will get a feel of what was happening in Europe. How this man, uh, he was of course, in those days all intellectuals were leftists. You know, all of them, most of them. He exploited from Indians. Like for example, he wrote about, there is a man called Hagenbach. Hagenbach, I don't know if you heard about him. He used to bring animals, Indian animals, Indian tribals, and used to exhibit in Berlin Zoo. He will exhibit the Indian animal and his uh, or Adivasis. And they will be forced to dress in that cold, in their, their Indian dress. They will have to show the public how they cook, how they eat. So it was a degrading thing. So he is the only man, only one journalist who wrote about this Hagenbach's thing in Hindu. And then he made, along with Virendran Chathavadya, there was an Indian association. They passed a resolution. They agitated against it. And like that, you know, there are so many things. Like, for example, the uh, in Berlin, uh, Zakir Hussain was the then uh, Sardar KM, KM particular, not KM particular, the old KM particular, uh, then uh, Sarudin Naidu, all of them used to go, they used to give lectures, but then, and he used to, since he knew German well, he used to write in German also. So, he is the man who, and then he went on saying at that time, the China, China had already had one revolution before, that was the Komintang revolution. Already the fissures between Komintang and uh, communism were going on. So he started saying that China is much more appreciated in Europe than India. Why can't India be appreciated? So the consciousness, whoever has read those Hindu dispatches will know what was happening. But now we have forgotten. Now I have now resurrected the whole thing to find out that part of the history. We hardly know anything about. We know, of course, our freedom struggle in India. But what happened, what help was given from outside through the resi uh, residents of Indian students and others, we don't know. So, in some ways, it will be, it will help us in uh, get, getting more, more clarity about the role of Indians at that time. Thank you, Mr. Balachandran. And this is the book which is going to be released in another two weeks, A Life in Shadow, The Secret Story of Asian Nambia, a Forgotten Anti-Colonial Warrior. Uh, can we open this up? Yes. Questions? Uh, let's start the interactions. Kisi ke paas, paas kuch bhi sawal hai? Shuru karte hai. Yeah. Who is the publisher? Publisher? Who is the publisher? Publisher, who is this? Rolly books. Rolly books. Questions? Hello, sir. My name is Kunjal Makwana. And I wanted to ask you one question, but it is not uh, about this book. So, may I proceed, sir? Yeah, yeah. So, I wanted to pass. I wanted to ask you that uh, nowadays uh, you have a lot of exposure to the world and you are quite old so you must have more experience. So I wanted to ask you that uh, in which direction nowadays our youth is going? Is that the right way in your view? So I want to have your views. Sir. It has no connection with this. If I say they are not going in the right direction, they will beat me up now. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me tell you very frankly. I am so happy. Today when I came here, when I saw so many children running around and doing the work, I was immensely happy. Let me tell you one thing. I like youngsters to take a lot of interest in the current affairs. In Bombay, although many of the people avoid going to schools or colleges, I never say no. I always go and give lectures in the schools and colleges. And the 
the the question, see there is this Xavier's Institute of Mass Communication. You will be knowing so one of the uh, premier uh, institutions training journalists, postgraduate institute for uh, uh, mass communication. The question they ask, I tell you, they are so relevant and point without any exaggeration or and all that. I I have no doubt that the youth are progressing well and absolutely I have tremendous faith in them. I'm not saying that to curry favor because I'm not standing for any election. But this is a genuine thing, my faith in the present Indian youth. We have 10 minutes to sum up the entire session. Any more questions, please? Yes, this side. Ah, chalo. Idhar se nikale hai, aapko de dete Sir, uh, in today's uh, era of social media, how do you view the intelligence network in the current system? And, uh, you know, this uh, talk about hacking, the Legion hackers, how, what would be your observation? You see, uh, let's go back slightly. The first person to realize the importance of visual media, I'll come to social media later, visual media was John F. Kennedy. He, you know, his presidential debate with Nixon and others, that had such an impact on the, uh, on the electorate that then they realized that visual media can play, till then it was only written media, newspaper, you have to wait for the newspaper to come next morning, then only you can have that opinion. Or, of course, the radio was there. But radio was not that impressive. Similarly, this visual, uh, the social media is now overtaken. It can be used for very good purpose, it can be used for very bad purpose. Now, Islamic State, I, incidentally, I am also <coughs> one of the students of terrorism. I was a member of the two-man committee which inquired into 2611 terrorist attack in Mumbai. In fact, I wrote the report myself. So I know something about terrorism. The way the Islamic State is, uh, is uh, using social media, even when they are being pounded all over, Aleppo and all, so many other places, still you see that uh, the other day, just about uh, two days ago, there was an article in New York Times. Okay. How Islamic State is extending their tentacles all over Europe to USA and other. Uh, Strasbourg, they very narrowly averted a huge massacre in Strasbourg just last week. Because they all, you know, nobody knows that they are actually sympathizers of this. So that is being misused by, by certain people, criminals are misusing it. WhatsApp, which is our, you know, common method of communicating with our friends and relatives are being used by criminals. Then you have got the dark web. We are not able to fathom anything. Our, none of our government agencies, not even US, when Russians broke into the Democrat uh, uh, Party's uh, computers, could the National Security Agency, which is one of the biggest in the world, at one time, they had 90,000 employees. They could not do anything. So we are not able to catch up with the criminals and people who are misusing the social media. They still have not been able to find out a solution to from where the Islamic State is doing all this. Where are they? Where are they located? No, we don't know. We still don't know. So that is very bad because that is going to be a very big crisis. So uh, about again, the youth, let me tell you another example. After the Second World War, it may not be relevant to your question, but it is some way it will also add up to the knowledge. After the Second World War, President Clinton said, I'm uh, not sorry, after the end of the Cold War, President Clinton said, why should we have waste of so much of intelligence and let's cut down. National Security Agency, NSA, I've gone to their headquarters, Fort Meade, very near Washington, D.C. There, it is like a, uh, about 50,000 uh, cars will be parked there because there are 90,000 employees there. And that was cut down to 30,000. 30, the, when the Osama Bin Laden's uh, menace came, they were completely caught flat-footed. They did not know what to do. 
the technology they had, the know-how they had in the NSA was at least 20 years old. So then some bright uh, youngster in the Congress, US Congress, said we are going to now do something. They collected a lot of these uh, young students who were fiddling with uh, computers, recruited them to help with them. Uh, they, we don't care about the uh, eligibility, whether you are 22, 23, 24, uh, are you a graduate, etc. Those can't be no. If you, as long as you know how to use a computer, at that time there was no social media. And internet was just starting. They, they recruited in mass and then told the FBI, come on, use them. And that gave a feeling. So we may have to do something like that to beat the social media manager. But the problem is, the government is so inelastic, we don't, uh, I have asked this great question in a, when I was addressing a uh, meeting in Pune. I said, there are any number of talents here in, in India. We can catch all of them. Only thing is, he will not fit into your norms of government servant. He is not a graduate. He is not this, etc., etc. He may be, may not look good also. But that fellow knows a lot about computer. Get them. Let them put their army. You can pay them uh, whichever one. You have got secret one. You pay them. But put that army against this Islamic state. And, and uh, bring it. But that, unfortunately, not in India, not in Europe, not even in USA. <laughs> okay. So, here is one question from. Yes, please. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my question is that how important was objectivity in writing the biography of a person that you've known so personally? I didn't uh, quite understand uh, the can objectivity you, of a. Can person. you please repeat the question? Yeah. No, I, I, I understand, but I don't know what exactly is in your mind. Uh, is it that it is difficult for a person? Yeah, I wanted to ask you how difficult was it? Ah. Yeah, so how did, how was it that you were so objective? You see, uh, there is, uh, there are two ways of writing biography. One is that you praise a band, everything that he did, so many people are writing like that and then you conclude that he is the best person in the world. The other thing is, you stand back. Forget about your proximity or anything like that. You stand back. I mean, I don't want to say that the old man is gone, 1986 left. If he were to read this, he will shout at me. <laughs> because I have revealed many of his embarrassing, how he abandoned his uh, wife, you know, he, he didn't tell me. He, it is not that he wanted to, uh, me, but I also thought that that is a private matter. I, I never asked him this question about what happened. He told me, uh, so Hasni wanted to do party work, so she left me. But from special brand record, I find something di totally different. She wanted to go back to Europe, and by the time he started liaison with a German girl. So, my closeness with him for six years did not stand in my way of giving a very uh, objective assessment about him, where I praised him a lot. I praised him a lot, his contribution. His self, uh, he, he, there's no selfishness in that. He could have been a biggest money agent for Mrs. Gandhi or Nehru. He, because they had, every letter that you write to even Nehru he used to reply. Although Nehru did not make use of him for any of his project or anything, except appointing Mr. Nepalta. And he was very unhappy. Uh, that he left it, you know, midway. He, he, uh, even Mrs. Gandhi, he would have made tons of money, but did not. He died almost like a poor man. He had only about 5 lakhs of rupees in his bank. And that also, because since the relation did not come, it was forfeited to the bank. He had no other thing. So, here is a man who may, might have been secretly and he might have been quietly uh, doing his, what they call dalliance and all that. That's none of my business. But I wrote about it because it seems it will be a full biography. Any last question from anybody? This should be the uh, last question from the session because we are uh, supposed to end it. We are running a little out of time. Two. We can take. Okay. Uh, Neelam ji, ke can I but two questions. Ek either, ek either. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Haan, unko. So my question is, uh, Mr. Nambiar was caught by German stormtroopers, right? 
Mr. Namia was caught by German stormtroopers, right? Mm -hmm. So whether he was caught for spying on India or his relations with USSR. Yeah. I told you. Sorry. I told you that there was that uh, uh, <coughs> right strike fire. Right strike is actually parliament. German parliament was burned down. And that was on 27th February 1933. 27th February 1933. It was early morning uh, at uh, 0 59, midnight. Midnight means the night of 26th and 27th. And Nambir was arrested that same evening at about 7 o'clock because he was writing against Nazis. He was writing against Nazis and also Sarajan Naidu's son, Yajur Naidu, he was also arrested because he used to write not only in German but also in uh, English all over, you know. So, he was not arrested for any spying or anything. He was arrested for commandments. You know, if you see the history of Hitler, why did he start this, uh, uh, you know, the program against the Jews? Because most of the Jews were communists also. So he went, if you see the history at that time, he went, he appealed to England, he appealed to USA, who were against the communists. You know, they were very scared of communism rising in the Soviet Union. And it had its own effect. The intellectuals were pro-left, etc. So Hitler wanted to say that my suppression of Jews my suppression of these communists is in a way helping you. So that is why Nambiar was arrested. Then, at that time, there was a man called Professor Bevan. Bevan. He intervened and told the British. British did not want to help him. British said that he was already in the Munich conspiracy case. Why should we help him? But he put pressure. He wrote to the then Secretary of State and then got him released after about, I think it, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, 26 days. He was in custody for 26 days. And uh, the second time he was arrested was by the Allied troops. Because Germany was uh, defeated and Nambiar was there. By, by the time, Bose had already gone to Far East. And Nambiar's uh, unit was there. So he was arrested and he was in jail, a concentration camp and all that for about 2-3 years at that time. Due to no fault of his. Uh, he, he did work for both and uh, only Nehru could save him, otherwise they wanted to sort of, you know, incidentally, now British were complaining that he was Soviet. Here, from the uh, declassified records, he, 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 they approached him, you know, after the Second World War, he was being interrogated. And so they made an approach to him. Why don't you? You are very close to Nehru. You can become our agent, British agent. So they tried to recruit him as a spy and he refused. And then from then onwards, they started hardening uh, their stand against him. They would not even give him a passport. But of course, after 1946, when Nehru uh, became the head of the Indian government, they, he was given a passport. Okay. One question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I, I think it's my first time where uh, I'm listening to a person like you who have, you know, worked this way. His uh, job has been this. And I'm a student. So, uh, just now, it's all about curio curiosity, more of, you know? What is it? So, I have two questions. It's uh, not more about the book. It's, it's about two things. Uh, motivation and uh, psychology or parameters, you can say. So motivation, uh, people go, people attach themselves to uh, uh, agency like RAW, they work for country, they put their lives and family and many more things at stake first. Where, from where do they get this motivation? Because this is a time where if the remote control of the TV is five feet away from me, I won't be in mood to you know, stand up and grab it. So, from where this motivation comes, or what is the procedure, so if any? One question is, where do they get the motivation yes, from? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Second, one? Second, second one is, you say Miss Nambia uh, uh, had opportunity to, you know, have uh, money and you know, stuff. 
so and even then he decided to stay pure act honestly etc etc so person like this uh what are the parameters like what 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 are what, what are the parameters of honesty what, yeah no not no. honesty but how Dedication. how do they do uh, how do they decide that okay this is right i'll stick to it i have power but i won't do it huh. so, so what can be this uh, cycle because you have uh, been in you know touch correct we call that thank you I see about the motivation let me tell you it is individual it is inborn in you nobody can inject that motivation you can go on telling you but to decide that i'll work for the country is is in me the others can help you but unless you yourself agree that it is going not going to be an easy path supposing you join draw and then uh, work for the country or anything it's not going to be an easy thing it's not like james bond you know going with uh, in flashy cars and with beautiful women that's not going to be it's a very very difficult job <laughs> and the other thing is again it is your own your family your tradition your teachers they tell you to be honest honest to yourself that is what what is very very important. so hope you get the answer last question uh, from the sir uh can we have a mic please uh thank you sir uh, this has been extremely illuminating uh i quite recognize that if you had not brought up the role of sunandia yeah. sir little closer to it would have perhaps been lost to posterity forever now my question is that throughout our freedom struggle apart from the main actors there were number of secondary and tertiary actors who have got mentioned in some manner in some literature document reports despite this gentleman being known to mrs gandhi despite the fact that uh, uh, he worked in the foreign ministry how is it that through 50s 60s 70s 80s all those decades nobody brought out the stellar role he performed though a journalist in our films i can only answer from mr nagar point of view you see he he was a very very humble person you know if you see him in a crowd you will never notice him like that you know you just inconspicuous in fact that is one of the reason why people will say that he is a spy because a spy is always inconspicuous you know like that type of thing but he was left to himself he never aggressively projected himself as a closest confidant of nehru now if i mention some of these nehru used to tease him all the time so many so many times he used to tease him he used to say you are a lazy fellow you you don't do enough work you are you know he, he used to say you should get up and do exercise you are lazy fellow you are not doing no exercise nehru used to tell him and he used to enjoy now one incident i mentioned he was in prague nehru and indira gandhi had come to paris and nehru is very fond of uh, museums you know he was as you know so he had uh, just seen the museum in uh, paris called musee del uh, uh, no sorry uh, musee de lo the man's museum musee de lo it's a anthropological museum the uh, you know uh, the sort of how the human species arrived etc etc so nambiar is coming from prague all the way by train he says i am very tired and nehru is says that you are lazy fellow that's why you are tired <laughs> he says no no have you seen museum de lo he said no go and see that and come back and report to me he said look i just come after tiring train journey from prague and you want me to go to the museum no no you go you just go and he says i felt like murdering him because of that i am not use that word but this is what he told me i felt like killing him for doing this he goes that he would disobey nehru because he used to consider him as his teacher ne nehru had a bent as a teacher he always would like to teach others he right. goes that and then he got very happy and he gave an excellent french lunch with wine and all that as a compensation <laughs> so but nehru he could have many people have taken advantage of proximity with nehru mm -hmm. many people have taken proximity with uh, being so close to uh, mrs gandhi 
one letter that uh, Nanu will write immediately. You see, some of the letters Mrs. Gandhi has written is dictated when she is flying to Northeast, flying to Andaman, flying here, flying there, etc. But she will always reply. But that man never took any advantage. He never recommended his son. He never was his son were not there at all. No interviews in the government, nothing. That is the thing. He, he never took advantage. He never took advantage. So, if you had asked him at that time, can I write a biography of you? He would have said nothing to me. I have not done it. He told me. I have not done anything. Why should? Why do you want me to write uh, my memoirs? I have not done anything. Really. That is the reason. Okay. On that uh, note, sir, any concluding uh, statement would you like to pass on? Any concluding note, sir? Any concluding note of this conversation? Thank you. On that note, thank you very, very... I, I thank the uh, Literary Festival. There's a lot of enthusiasm here. I'm so happy to be with you. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful that you have given both of us an opportunity. Neelam Chit, would you like to say something? Just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both very, very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So, guys, um, uh, ऐसे ही सेशंस, इंटरेस्टिंग सेशंस से हमें पता चलता है कि भारत कितनी महान हस्तियों से परिपक्व बना है, आज तक पहुंचा है। I am sure कि मेरी तरह आपको भी बहुत ही ज़्यादा एनरिचमेंट लगा होगा, knowing this very hidden personality. Yeah, so moving further, एक सरस मज़ा नूब रस्पेक्ट सेशन परिथि थवा जाए रहे हो जे, संबंधों ने गुंचवो नहीं, गुंथो। सुबह मजानु सेशन थवा जाए रहो जे अने भारी मात्रा में बीड ओके तो मने लागे जब बदतर संबंध तुम डखा जे सो गुंचवन उकेलवा अने गुंथवा माटे नहीं यहाँ जे तमे कड़ा केड़वा आवेश हो बहु आनंद तमने जोई ने सो हवे